There is a Yid by the name of Reb Moshe Dickstein who lives in Be'er Sheva. And they asked him if he could go visit the Be'er Sheva prison. Yes, in Eretz Yisrael, there are individuals who unfortunately have found trouble. And for whatever reason it is, they end up with a life of crime and difficulty, and they end up in prison. And they too need chizuk. And many of these completely unaffiliated Jews, they need someone to care about them, someone to teach them, someone to give them hope. So this Ramesha Dickstein goes to the prison, and he told the warden, I'd like to teach them Torah. Most of them have never learned Torah before. And he said, of course. And he asked them, would you be able to go around to each of the prison cells and tell them that there's someone giving a class and hopefully they'll come. Well, that's what they did. The prison guards went around. They went cell to cell and they recruited so many people, so many prisoners for the class. Most of the prisoners came. But he noticed there was one cell that they skipped over. They didn't knock on that cell door. And he asked them, why not? And they said, oh, no one knocks on that prison cell door. And he asked, why not? And he says, well, that guy is a very, very dangerous fellow. In fact, we keep him locked up 23 and a half hours a day. He's done some terrible things. Only for a half hour a day do we allow him into the yard and then he's allowed to exercise and he comes back into his cell, but that's it. So he said, well, I'd like to speak to him. And they said, well, you can't. I'm sorry, that's too dangerous. We're sorry, Rabbi. And he said, I'll take responsibility for myself. And they said, you'd have to sign a whole bunch of consent forms. He said, I'll do just that. I have no problem with that. I'd like to speak to the fellow. And finally it was arranged, he would speak to him. They thought he'd be in and out within a minute. The fellow would chase him out of his cell, but when he knocked on the door and he asked if he could speak to him, the fellow was more than accommodating. He seemed to welcome the idea and even invited him to sit down on his bed. The prison guards were standing outside the cell and they started to talk. And he asked him about his childhood and he told him, he's had a very, very difficult life. By the time he was eight, years old he was totally on his own and he lived on the streets and he fell into a life of crime and he did some terrible things well the rabbi began to teach him about Hashem about Emunah about belief about the Torah about Avram Avinu about Moshe Rabbeinu about Maimed Har Sinai about receiving the Torah about our Avis and Himalis, he had never heard any of this. After he was done, the rabbi says to him, would you like to do something for Hashem? And he said, yeah. And he said, you know what? I have some tefillin here. Would you like to wrap tefillin? He didn't even know what it was. He pulled it out and the rabbi thought for a second, one second, this is a little dangerous. Tefillin of straps, boxes. But he went ahead with it. And the man rolls up his sleeve and reveals a terribly inappropriate tattoo on his big bulging muscles where you would put the tefillin. Ramesha hesitated for a moment, but then he went ahead with it. And he wrapped the prisoner's arm with tefillin. And then he said goodbye to him. They said Shema Yisrael and he was so grateful. He walks out of the prison cell and the guard said to him, what'd you do? How'd you do it? And he said, I just taught him Taira. The Taira speaks for itself. You don't have to apologize for it. And it will reach even the most troubled and lost souls. Two weeks later, he came back and he went to visit the prison and the prisoner was overjoyed to see him. And the guard said, you know, his entire demeanor has changed. And he goes to visit him and he says, Rabbi, could we wear tefillin again? He says, of course, he rolls up his sleeve and he sees a horrible wound by his bicep. He said to him, what happened? He said, I saw your hesitation. I saw the look on your face. I saw you swallow hard. And I realized, of course, it's because of the inappropriate image that was tattooed onto my arm. And I asked the prison 
if they'd allow me to wash it off, it didn't go easily. I finally had to scrape it. And that's the wound. But I got rid of it, Rabbi, so please put the tefillin on. And he says, are you sure? I hope it doesn't hurt. And he wrapped him in the tefillin, and as he was doing it, he heard the fellow grimacing in pain, wincing. He says, I'm sorry, you want me to do it? He says, Rabbi, please just wrap me tight. And he did. And with tears in his eyes, together they recited Shema Yisrael, a lost and troubled soul, wrapped in tefillin. It's almost as if you wrapped Hashem around him. And he felt complete. Obviously, there were sins he had to atone for, but his entire life changed because of one encounter, learning Torah. And that is a secret we must always remember. Torah is the cure to all the ills of our society, Rav Gifter once said. No matter how lost you are, Torah can bring you back home.